guys, KSK here. Welcome back to this brand new video. This is called Dirtfest OS and this OS is the next level of custom ROMs. Before getting into this video, make sure you click on the subscribe button below and hit the bell icon to get notified whenever I post a new video. Let's get started. Dirtfest OS is a brand new custom ROM that I have installed on my Redmi K20 Pro and Poco F1 and I have been using this ROM for almost quite some time and I gotta tell you guys one thing, so it's smooth as fast. Unlike other ROMs, it has unique features that I will be telling in a moment and why you should start using it as a daily driver. So this will include both pros and cons, so make sure you watch the video till to the end. So let's start with the pros. I'm going to talk about a few things that I like about this ROM. So starting with the lock screen. When you unlock the screen, it would take you to see the new launcher. It's called a launcher 2. So this launcher is highly customizable according to your liking. You can change the look of the user interface by adding icon packs, colors, grid styles and more. And as you can see, this launcher looks quite amazing and it's much better than the stock Android launcher we get to see in other custom ROMs. Like Pixel Launcher, it comes with a Google Feed section. So swiping to the right reveals the Google Cut section. And as usual, normal functionalities like swiping up from the bottom reveal the app drawer and swiping down anywhere within the home screen reveals the notification center and quick toggle panel. So pretty much the same way we used to do with Pixel Launcher. Now let's talk about the core changes to the user interface. So this ROM brings a blur effect to the various elements of UI. Take a look at the notification bar. Whenever you access the notification center, you get to see a gorgeous blur effect of the background, which differentiates the way how it looks compared to the stock version. Also, the app switcher seems to be a redefined. The way it looks in stock Android is completely different. The background is blurred out completely and gives a stunning look of the app switcher. Dirtfest OS also provides a brand new quick toggles that are pre-installed out of the box. Within the quick toggles section, you can access more toggles like caffeine, sensors, gaming mode, a sound search, screen stabilization, focus mode, and more specifically, it comes with Android 11 feature called FPS counter. So this toggle is currently limited to only a few Android devices at this moment. FPS counter is a new setting that shows the refresh rates of the screen. I believe it is currently showing the display refresh rate instead of the actual content that flows on the screen. So it's time to talk about the smoothness. So this ROM is completely different in terms of smoothness. It's fast as smooth. The animations and transitions you get to see on bigger displays like Redmi K20 Pro with higher refresh rates are intensive. To make it more smooth, I have overclocked my Redmi K20 Pro with 72Hz refresh mod and the UI feels like barely smooth. So 0% lag and stutters are noticed. Like other ROMs, this OS gives more options to customize the user interface to the next level. So within the settings, you will see an option called a dark quest. So this setting holds the space for advanced options, which indeed helps in customizing the user interface according to your fancy. For instance, I can use a themes setting to change the style of toggles, icon packs, and accent colors. So these are a few a preset of accent colors that are pre-installed and you can use it according to your fancy. Apart from that, you can customize the lock screen, power menu, notifications, system animations, and more. So this ROM also comes with a OnePlus screen recorder on both Redmi K20 Pro and Poco F1, but it didn't seem to be working as intended. Due to Android 10 limitations, screen recording with system audio is still a glitch and you have to rely on the microphone to capture the audio from games and applications. For gamers, this would be a bummer for them. Now, one of the biggest things about this ROM is the consistent weekly updates. The official website of them gives an information about how they update the ROM every week by releasing patches, bug fixes, and software updates. So this way, you can blindly choose this ROM if your concerns are about software updates. 
So lastly, let's talk about the performance and battery life. So as usual on Redmi K20 Pro, the performance is unbelievable. So you can't see how smooth the performance in real time on camera. Everything you throw at it handles like a boss. And the same goes for Poco F1. Now when it comes to heavy games like PUBG, so this ROM handles the game in high settings very easily without any frame drops. Now what makes it happy was that while gaming on Redmi K20 Pro, you you won't be noticing any stutters or lag but when it comes to Poco F1 so initially the gameplay seemed to be a very laggy but after 5 or 10 seconds you will get decent frame rates without any issues. So like performance battery backup is also next level. I do get 6 hours of SOT on my Redmi K20 Pro and 6.5 hours on my Poco F1. It's time to talk about some cons of this ROM. So I have noticed on Poco F1 you may face a touch lag issues. It doesn't seem to be responding properly, which is sort of annoying. Probably the touch drivers aren't updated in this build. We already know Poco F1 is having ghost touch issues ever since it got released. But keep in mind, these are very minor touch issues you would encounter while scrolling and typing. So again, this won't bother using this ROM as your daily driver. So number two, default camera. So like other ROMs, the developers of this ROM has included the stock camera on Poco F1, which is ugly to take pictures and videos. It's not at all great to use it as a default camera. This is not the case with Redmi K20 Pro. You would get a stock MIUI camera instead of Gcam 7, and it's far more superior than the stock camera. You can use Gcam 7.3 on Poco F1 to capture better pictures and videos. I will leave a link in the description box down below, just gonna go and check that out. So number three, volume bug. All Android 10 ROMs are suffering from the volume bug issue. So let's say you're watching a video and you got interrupted by a call. After hanging up the call, you will notice the audio goes to mute when you resume the playback of video on YouTube. The same goes for ringtones, notifications, and call volume. So this can be fixed by yourself. Whenever you face this issue, try to adjust your volume sliders just like this so this will resolve the problem in regards to audio and lastly on poco f1 i have noticed there is a pop-up alert will be displayed every time you restart the device i don't exactly know what this meant to be and how it affects the system and that's it guys these are some of the cons that i have noticed keep in mind these bugs may not be persistent forever and developers will fix it in future releases apart from that normal functionalities like wi-fi bluetooth volte upa applications like google pay wide band l1 certification works fine without any issues so what do you guys think about it should you install it I would say this ROM is very smooth on high-end devices and considering the fact the level of support it receives from developers is astounding. The weekly updates made me use this ROM for one more month as my driver. So let me know what you say about it, leave a like, share the video and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet and consider hitting the bell icon to receive the post notifications of my latest videos. So thanks for watching, it's been KSK Ryle signing off. I can never ever find the right words And there's no way this is real life There's no telling you're the right girl So I can only say that it feels right It feels right